What happens if the market starts to crash again? And not only that, but what happens if the Federal Reserve rolls out its traditional toolkit like buying US government bonds, more than they're already buying them and lowering interest rates. And what happens if those tools do not work in stopping the crash like they have before? Well, guess what? Not only is that a question of if, but it's a question of when, because the fact of the matter is that the traditional tools will not work next time. And I'm going to explain number one, why, and then number two, why they will resort to non-traditional tools like buying stocks, which they've never done before. Ready? Let's dive in. Go back to the dot-com bubble burst. Greenspan wanted to soften the blow of this stock market crash on the economy. So what did he do? Lowered interest rates. This accomplished the goal of softening the blow on the economy. What else did it do though? It sowed the seeds for the housing bubble because suddenly you've got an entire industry, real estate, that is immune to recessions, immune to crashes, and the lowering of the interest rates caused a surge of new money to be able to flood into that industry. We all know how that turned out just a couple of years later, and that blew up in everybody's faces, and guess what? This time, the intervention had to be more than just lowering interest rates a bit. They had to do that and start QE, debt monetization, pay for the government to buy things and bail out the economy and buy mortgage-backed securities themselves to bail out the financial system. Fast forward a few years later, and next time the economy blew up, it wasn't possible to rely on the traditional tools, which was lowering interest rates a little bit and buying some assets. They had to do exponentially more than they did before. So this time they rolled out a lot of QE. They monetized trillions in government debt. They bailed out the entire economy instead of just the financial system. Not only that, but they set up special purpose vehicles held at the treasury to purchase things that the Federal Reserve is not allowed to purchase themselves because they couldn't rely on just buying government treasuries. They couldn't rely on just buying mortgage-backed securities. They needed to directly buy corporate debt through corporate bond funds, but they are, it's illegal for the Federal Reserve to do that. They are not allowed to do so. So instead what they did was they pulled the move of the 19-year-old with a 21-year-old buddy, gave their buddy some cash and said, go buy this for me. So their 21 year old buddy went into the liquor store, bought some alcohol for his 19 year old friend. That's exactly what the treasury did for the federal reserve, getting around the letter of the law, not abiding by the spirit of the law. The federal reserve funded all of these purchases through the treasury's special purpose vehicles. Now what we are seeing is the rug is being pulled out from underneath the fake paper economy. We are seeing a slowdown in the money supply growth. We are seeing a reduction in the amount of assets the Fed is purchasing. Interest rates are going up in anticipation of the Federal Reserve raising the federal funds rate. These are all things done in an effort to put a lid on inflation, but the fact of the matter is things are going to start breaking very soon here, and when they do start breaking, the Federal Reserve is going to have to make a choice, and they will make the choice to go back to QE, back to buying, back to lowering assets, but guess what? It's not going to work because every time before, all we have to do is look back at history, we can see that the bail out must be bigger because last time the bailout sowed the seeds for an even greater crash in the future. And that's exactly what's happening right now. The last time we had a bailout in 2020 for the entire economy, we subsidized failure. We supported the destruction of wealth, the malinvestment of resources, the misallocation of funds, and all of the rot was sustained, was supported, was subsidized a little bit longer. And that's only going to make the next crash even worse. So just doing a little bit of QE, buying a few government bonds, a few trillion here, a few trillion there, buying some mortgage-backed securities, not gonna cut it. That didn't even cut it last time. That's why they had to buy corporate bonds. So they're gonna buy corporate bonds again. But guess what? You always have to one-up because the, the seeds that you sowed from the bailout last time make the crash worse the, the, the next time the crash comes. And so this next crash, they're gonna have to one-up themselves, do yield curve control, they're going to have to buy stocks to prevent the stock market from crashing. And again, 
This is not unprecedented. Even Janet Yellen, when she was the Fed chair back in 2016, said there may come a time when the Federal Reserve has to step in and outright buy individual stocks or stocks through an ETF. All you'd have to do is take it one little tiny step further than you've already taken it. Set up a special purpose vehicle held at the Treasury for buying uh, stock ETFs instead of corporate bond funds. It's very easy. You don't even need Congress to rewrite the Federal Reserve Act to give you permission. You're getting around the letter of the law. Easy peasy. The reality is that the recession is the cure for the malinvestment and every time you stop the cure from being able to take place, all you do is sow the seeds for greater destruction down the road and what they will do in response to this next crash, buying stocks, yield curve control, zero interest rates across the curve, and, and plenty of other things along with it will cause the uh, economy to overdose on stimulus. That's when you'll start to see hyperinflation down the road. We don't have that now. We're not close to it now, but it's coming after the next crash. For two great books about this, I recommend The Downfall of Money and When Money Dies by Adam Ferguson and Frederick Taylor. I will link them both in the description below. As always, I really appreciate you guys. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day.